You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Edith Ann. Welcome to our home here in Virginia. Come on in. Hi, I'm Edith Ann Duncan. I'm an interior designer and we live here in Blacksburg, Virginia. So Blacksburg, Virginia, of course, is home to the Hokies, first and foremost, with Virginia Tech. I actually received my master's degree from Virginia Tech in interior design, so home of the Hokies. And then we also have beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains. We have the Parkway. And then we have wonderful resorts located near us, like the Greenbrier or the Homestead. So it's a very nice, uh, quiet ta college town. I, well, I wouldn't really say quiet, but it's a wonderful college town. It's a wonderful place to raise children, retirement, age two, so it's just a great place to be. First, we actually built and lived in our home next door to this for 18 years. And then we planned this home for two. It took two to build, and then we've been in the house seven years, but we literally built next door. We have lived here in Blacksburg area. My husband is from here, so we've been in the area 28 years, at least I have. We married um, a few years after college and been here ever since. But it's a wonderful place. We actually live in the valley, so it's about five minutes from downtown Blacksburg, but it's off of a golf course, which is great on the weekends and on the evenings too, to walk your dog, play golf, that type of thing. Okay, so here we're in the foyer. This is my favorite space in the first room that we started with for the entire home. Wonderful blue and white wallpaper, scenic. It's, it's the marina and then it changes to the countryside. We have this wonderful jib door that goes to the basement. Didn't want that scene from the front door. One of my favorite pieces is this piece from Palm Beach, vintage. I love the scale and the size of it. Of course, a little touch of hot pink, a little pop of that. And then this guy is so fun. So we actually use him in the foyer for entry. For instance, we're having a luncheon tomorrow and the theme is fruit and lemons. So we have those little touches here. So I love this piece for seasonal touches. So this piece, I love the texture and the whimsy of this uh, rattan dog from Amanda Lindroth. Love the contrast of that with the paper and the fine lacquer table. And that's another key element too, is contrast in spaces. If things are shiny, then you also want a scratchy, and then a smooth like this velvet. So the contrast of those make for a perfect space. So first this house, we have two children that are older, they're in college, so we have four bedrooms total. And then this house is about 5,500 to 6,000 square feet. I don't really know the exact measurement. And then we also have my interior design studio attached to the home. So it's really great that I can work here from home and then walk away. It's a multi-purpose room that functions both as our interior design studio, but then also as a dining room. We love to entertain family and friends here a lot. So it's nice to have multi-purpose rooms like that. And then you will also see in the tour that we like to have things that are intentional. For instance, a sense of ease when we entertain. We have, you know, there's, I've organized everything so it's very simple, you know, to have a dinner for two or it could be a dinner for 20. So everything's very organized and just ease. So do you want to see the study next? Let's go see that. So one of the favorite elements that I have of the study when you first walk in are these wonderful upholstered velvet doors. That was another element that was just very important to me when we first designed the home. Lacquered blue walls. I love the contrast of orange. And then we have wallpaper on the ceiling, which is a nice surprise. Everyone's always surprised by that element. So I love that. Lighting is so key. Lighting to me is a piece of jewelry. So each room has fantastic lighting uh, examples. Or for instance, the chandelier here. And then also in a space like this, I like the overall glow. I like lighting throughout the entire space. So we have sconces on the mantel, lamps here, floor lamps to kind of cast over this day bed. And then another element that I really love in this room that everyone's starting to use, including our clients, is the art TV over the mantel. So these, it's very nice, it has a television, but then you wouldn't know it. So it stays on an image of your choice as well. Every room needs an important element of live pieces or uh, plants, so every room needs a touch of something natural like that. And I love the tape detail, a dressmaker detail on this sofa too with this blue trim. And then of course this room has the orange um, pops of the Canton jars, 
throughout the bookcase in here. So a nice layer and a mix to different levels on your coffee table. I love that as well. Another key uh, factor here is the sisal rug, and then we have another handmade wool rug on top of it. I love the layer and approach of this. It makes it more casual, inviting. And so yeah, we live in this room really in the fall and winter. We have Christmas morning here. It's just a wonderful warm space. So bookshelves, I love to group books together by color. That's uh, to keep them nice and symmetrical and orderly. So you see here that I have white, red, some more white and green. And then I like to put small elements. For instance, we made these one time in Naples on a family trip. So I have those grouped together. Of course, everyone has this, you know, uh, mementos from golf tournaments and that kind of thing. So I have this tray. David gets to put all of his elements on here, his scorecards, golf balls and tees. And then I also group together photographs of special times with family and friends. So those are kind of uh, staggered here. And uh, yeah, turned out really pretty. So the ceiling actually has a little pop of a surprise with a wallpaper. It looks like agate stone that's been sliced. I use this technique a lot with clients as far as either uh, painting the ceiling or wallpapering the ceiling. I love the texture of it. Sometimes that it gives a room, so you will see that a lot in the homes that we create. That we, This is our fifth wall and it's probably one of the most important in the entire room. So don't forget your ceiling. Okay, so these lamps are actually figurines that I had made into lamps. And then again, the special touch of a fabric shade. And in here, the accent is green. So I chose the green, but I love the fabric lamp shades. If you can um, place those in your home, that would be beautiful. So I love in traditional interiors where it's very classic, but in, then you throw in something very modern, for instance, like this acrylic um, bracket. I love the touch of this with the orange and white chinoiserie jar. So always remember to pop in a little bit of a modern feature such as Lucite, and I, I think that's great. So this, I'm a traditionalist, but I also like fresh aspects too. So this home is based on Georgian architecture where it's very symmetrical, but then um, I love white classic brick houses, but then we threw in a little twist with the black windows and black shutters. So next let's go into the family room. We love this space to watch college football, movies, just an overall great room for the dogs, family, and it is um, based on these two sofas, which are great, which are performance fabrics. Signature fabric like this on a chair, and yes, it's treated because, it, again, we live here. Wonderful little details like the tape contrast on the bottom of the chair. Love that. Wool rugs, those are the best in my opinion as far as wear and tear and family and cleaning. And then I love little boxes. These are older from Addison Weeks personality pieces on your coffee table. This is one of my favorites with malachite. So I have a collection of those. I love to, uh, also the metal flowers by Tommy Mitchell. These are my absolute favorite. So I love the natural element of this. White jars and also trays here on the coffee table. I love those to corral items. So you can see that those have a grouping of books and then again, we have the repeat of the Addison Weeks boxes. Love that. Chippendale, of course. Love those elements of Chippendale. And then this way towards the television, these are actually antique doors from Beijing. And I, I needed something long and linear and have some weight to it underneath this television and these two pieces of artwork. So I actually designed these. These are doors and I placed them on their sides. And then we have drawers, and you know all the entertaining I was talking about. We actually store all of our linens in here too, so everything has a purpose. The texture of this, of the brown, with the high contrast of the lacquer white. And then of course I have groupings, but try and keep it very simple and clean with the books, blue and white pieces, and then a collection of hair and bunnies. My grandmother, this is kind of a neat story. My grandmother every Easter would give me these bunnies. So I've grouped those together. And again, that's another thing. So you can use a tray or even an acrylic stand like this to put groupings of things together. Instead of having little pieces scattered everywhere, I always like them uh, grouped together like this. So these commission pieces are one of my favorites. I actually sent in the drapery fabric to the left. So you'll see that this is the same as what we have in this room. 
elements of the blue and white, love peonies, of course, and then some fresh limes. And then this one over here is the companion. So what's really nice about this is the size and scale of those two commission pieces with the television. So it's very grounding on the end of this room. So we wanted to create some bones to the home and again, make it appear a little bit older than what it really is. And so we created this paneling effect and then there's a wonderful cornflower blue paint above. And then the tray ceiling is one of my favorites as well. This is about 19 or 20 feet tall. So um, the scale of it's just, it's wonderful. I love the lighter blue in the tray also because it makes those elements pop a little bit. And then the star chandelier from Visual Comfort also is another wonderful element. Again, like a pair of earrings or, or jewelry to every room. So at Christmas time, what's great, This we have two trees. So we have one in our study, the blue room, and then we have one in here and it's about 12 feet tall, yes. So we have two trees every year, and it's always in this corner over here, walk, so we can see it from the kitchen as well, which makes it nice. Inside, the style is more of a Hollywood Regency. I love classic designers, um, for instance, Billy Baldwin, Dorothy Draper, and I wanted the classic elements, but I love color. And I always believe that what you wear and what you feel comfortable in is also what your home should reflect. So for instance, I love cobalt blue, hot pink, chinoiserie and those aspects are shown in my home as well you know blue lacquered walls or wonderful blue and white porcelains pops of hot pink so again what you feel comfortable wearing is what your home should reflect and that's what this home is and it's very comfortable we also have two pets so we always want everyone to feel warm and welcome here we live in this home it's not a museum you know if the dog jumps on the sofa then he's on the sofa now it's also a performance fabric on a lot of this upholstery too. So again, we live in this home. It's not a, not a museum. So next, let's go to the breakfast room. Let me show you that. So in here, we still have the elements of the lighter cornflower blue, like the walls in the other room. But then I've transitioned to a pop of more of a red color. So for instance, this is where we gather in the mornings for coffee. While I'm prepping dinner and the kids are here, we hang out and the, while I'm cooking. This makes for a great space. The fireplace, we turn the fire on. So this is a wonderful gathering area in the winter. And then again, what's very nice is you have these traditional elements, but then you have a pop like this piece of artwork up top too. Again, remember the contrast of old and new. For instance, my great grandmother's biscuit box, silver, with the contrast of a new abstract painting. One of my favorites in this room are these paper flowers. Adore those. The abaca rug by Patterson Flynn Martin. I love the texture and the pattern of this rug. And then it contrasted with the elements of the chinoiserie pattern here. This is Schumacher. And then of course, everyone needs a gingham check. So I love the mix of this. Another detail that I also like is gimp. Don't forget gimp and tape to any kind of upholstery. It gives more of a dressmaker look, but I love this chinoiserie pattern tape of the red against this cornflower blue. Another element that's just wonderful layer to this room that we added about two years ago is this grass cloth by Palm Orleans. And if you look at it closely, it's actually an oyster plate with lemons in the middle. So I love the texture of that. And then when we travel, we always get a menu when we're with family and friends of a special occasion. And I have everyone sign the menu and then I frame those in red. And this is a great window seat area for breakfast. Love the contrast of the more modern breakfast table as well. Light fixture again has the Chippendale pattern. Just love Chippendale. Chinoiserie, okay, that's another thing too. I love personalized the chinoiserie looks, but our clients, they always have different tastes. Um, but this is my personal style. I love the chinoiserie. So here in the breakfast area, this is our little nook. I wanted it to feel very comfortable and inviting so we actually the ceilings in here are a little bit lower and then to create even more of a cafe feel we apply this window treatment that looks like a, an awning so it's very nice when you gather here at the table and sometimes we'll have as many as seven friends and family gathered around this table and we will have breakfast or lunch or dinner so this is a great intimate space so let's talk about the mix of patterns too this is a great example of how i like to do those 
So the first rule of thumb is to always have a floral or a scenic, and then you mix that with a geometric. This is a smaller geometric and then a larger geometric. Do you see how the scale of this, it's smaller and it's tighter? Where this one is a little bit larger and open. And then another thing I love too is the contrast of solid elements with the mix of this. And this is nice and shiny, so I love the element of that compared to the scratchiness and the coarseness of this grass cloth. And the grass cloth almost has a circular motion as well. So that's why this mix works. And then also the element of metal here. So brass, red, and the texture of this. And it all, believe it or not, you think it's going to be a lot, but it's not. Once you put the whole composition together, then it works very nicely. Even down to this, I'm a very detail-oriented person. So even the shades are solid cornflower blue with the same red scallop edge. So just remember the kind of the rules of three. The solid, the floral, and the geometric. So this is that silver storage unit that I told you about. That's so literally we can have 20 people, people over right now. And I pick this up and I set up the buffet. Or um, this stores everything, all of the dinnerware. Again, everything has its place and it's organized. It's easy to get to. So we created these, the silver storage cabinet, and it has polished stainless fronts. And then the jewelry of this are the cremone bolts and brass. And then we've repeated the same element in our bar. So this is great to store too. For example, this is my grandmother's, this is um, her breakfast china. So I have all of this gathered and you can see with the placement, it's nice and orderly. I know exactly if I need a platter or a terrine. And then down below, we have a little bit of Christmas. But yeah, these, these are one of my favorites, this breakfast china. And then also this was my grandmother's wedding china as well. And of course, it's chinoiserie, so it kind of comes back, doesn't it? Of course, I love the hot pink and the gold rimming. So yeah, and that's another thing. I love to mix dinnerware as well. I like to do solid white plates and then have a little pop of that element. So don't always think that you have to use the same pattern everywhere. You can mix it with other solids. Maybe it's a geometric plate with the floral. You know, mix it up. Don't be scared. So my journey into interior, des interior design started at an early age. I loved building Lincoln Logs. I would make little rugs. I would make wallpaper, furniture. And then my, one of my closest dear friends had a replica of her home. And of course, her home had beautiful Gracie wallpaper. This was in North Carolina in her dining room. And the dollhouse was a replica of her home. And that just intrigued me. Like every little detail in that home was in this dollhouse. So I've always wanted one of those. So that's how I got, got started too. And then my, both of my grandmothers and my father had a taste and flair for interior design. So I grew up in wonderful homes and spaces with them. So that's where I learned the scale and proportion. And then in high school, I wanted to take a drafting class. Of course, my mom said first off, well, what cute guys in that class? I said, mom, it's not because of the, the guy. I want to study architecture. So through that, I also learned that I'm not the best at science and math. So that's when I changed my direction of architecture more into interior design. And so I received my first job in, as an interior design in the studio, helping with their showroom at age 16. So from there on, I've always been doing interior design. So here we have our kitchen. This literally is the first room that we designed for the entire home. We wanted it to be the perfect size. So in here, you will see that there's a barrel ceiling. And then we have um, accented this wall and that wall with white subway tile. And then we painted the mullions and things in this room black to make those recede a little bit. And then the large island, which I adore. And this is also, this isn't polished, so it's a honed finish, which is very forgiving to not show spills and wear and tear. I love the element of the, um, Elkins chairs, the Francis Elkins chairs, loop chair. Of course, a little chinoiserie nod again. Now, if you take a look at this room, um, I want you to notice that there are no upper cabinets whatsoever. And that's what makes this so nice and open and inviting. We have the open shelves here with pops of blue and white and some red. And then we have these storage cabinets on the left and the right, but that's really the only storage that we have. 
Otherwise, everything is all streamlined. We have our dishwashers hidden here, drawers. So everything is in a drawer. It's very accessible in every means, which is, which is great. Another element that I love is this polished metal on the um, adjacent cabinets to the range. I love this element, the brass accents on the range. And again here, this is the same polished nickel that were polished stainless steel that we like on the silver storage cabinets in this. And then this brings another conversation. I love to mix metals. The polished brass with the silver and then the brush, I have no problem with mixing finishes whatsoever. And I think it gives it a nice patina and age to it. And again, the trays that gather items together, for instance, you know, like this, I love whimsical things like this. Dog salt and pepper. Groupings of, you know, an heirloom silver pitcher that you have, you could throw in your cooking utensils there. So, um, yeah, the mix of all of this, and it's ease, so it's just very simple. So put the items that you use in great containers. That makes a big difference, too. And the very first plumbing item that I selected for this room was this great faucet. Love this guy. So we use these a lot in our clients' homes. I will, because um, this is my absolute favorite faucet. So it's great. So here we're on number four tee box of a golf course. So we can see someone teeing off and then right behind them is another uh, putting hole. So you can see them actually putt too. So it's a great place to see um, everyone enjoying themselves on great days to play golf. Okay, so this is one thing. I do love to cook. If I had time to cook, if I had more time, then I would actually enjoy it. So uh, we do cook some here. My husband loves to grill. So lots of times he will grill one item and then I'll do a side or a salad. But yes, I do enjoy to cook when I have time. So wallpapering the inside makes this, uh, the shelves pop a little bit. And I love to gather items together too, for instance, books. And then, you know, a great little silver piece to hold the dog treats when they come in from outside. Again, use pretty containers to put these items in. And then a lot of this, this is a ceramic piece by Eva Gordon. It's little peas. And then don't forget to, we have dogs. So of course it's a pretty dog tray with their water bowl inside. So make those things pretty too. It all makes a difference, just the little touches. So one of my favorite things about the kitchen is it leads to our covered porch. So let's go take a look. So here in the covered porch, we love to come here and um, gather with friends and family. We gather here when David grills. There could be two of us. There could be eight or 10 of us, even more. So we always dine here on this great round table. And then we have this seating area, which is great. And don't forget to always bring out elements of indoors where you think, you, you know, bring those outside. It's okay. So I love the Canton jar jars outside, the scratchiness of this console table. And then again, the blue from the inside. I brought that outside with the cornflower blue. The gas lanterns, I love the ambiance of that. We really don't have a lot of gas uh, lanterns here in our area, but that was one of the first things that I really decided that I really would like in this home. And then we have a gathering area over here this way that has a fireplace, television. It's a great little seating area where we watch college football. And of course, uh, of course, enjoy the view. So we're here in the valley. And what's really nice is sometimes the tops of the mountains are covered in snow and then we have nothing down here. But the beauty of it's just wonderful. And of course you can see here um, actually, that's our contractor that built the house that's um, coming out to play golf, too. So it's great to see friends enjoying themselves on the golf course. I would say we're here from the 1st of April through November, December. We've actually gathered here on Thanksgiving Day, opened the studio doors for uh, Thanksgiving dinner. So maybe eight to nine months out of the year, we're out here. It's great because we also have this uh, articulating fan that gives a little bit of age. So we've got some wind movement with that. And then what's really nice at night too are these columns are lit from the bottom. There's light coming up the columns. So it's just beautiful both during the day and at night, architecturally too. Color is very important to design because it, it sets the mood for the room. If it's red, you're gonna be a little, it's a very warm room, but sometimes if it's too intense of a red, then it could, you could feel agitated. Or for instance, in a dining room or a bedroom, a nice color or a glow on everyone's complexion always looks very nice so color is very intentional as far as the mood 
and what it represents or gives a feeling of to, to everyone in the space. So next we are here in the bar. This is right outside of our breakfast room and kitchen. And again, it has the same elements as the kitchen with the stainless steel fronts and the cremone bolt hardware. The white countertop, and I love the detail of this edge on the side. And then what started this entire room was actually the sink. And it's, this looks like horse bits here and the polished uh, nickel. So then I also use the horse bit hardware here as well. These black cabinets uh, make the space very dramatic and it's funny whenever we have parties, everyone always gathers in here for some reason. They just love this space. And then we have additional storage up top, which makes it nice. And actually this too, this is a mix of old and new. So my great grandmother's glassware here and then mixed with new pieces. So again, old and new. So this is my great grandmother's. So I love the element of the green and the gold. So lots of times I will mix this in our dining room for a special holiday, but then I will mix it with something new as well. So don't forget to use old and new, but I love the history of these. And then of course we have our wedding goblets too. And enjoy those things. Don't let them just sit in the cabinet. You need to use them. That's another thing. Everyone thinks that you should just have your special things put away and not use them at all. And I do not have that belief. Use it every day. Just enjoy it. Wonderful gold light fixture and then the contrast of that gold grass cloth against the black cabinetry makes for a nice contrast. And this is another area I always like to make every moment special. For instance, if you're having a cup of coffee, if we have friends over for the weekend, I'll have this set up as a coffee bar. Today we have it set up for bourbon because it's getting to be a little chilly here, so we have an array of bourbons. But I like to make it very easy to grab your dish take a pretty napkin and just go with it. And so it's already set up for entertaining both for yourself and for others. My drink of choice actually would be a gin and tonic. I think that's kind of a good all year round, nice fresh drink. So next let's go to the studio. Of course in here we have the Lucite, the contrast of the Tommy Mitchell artwork, which I love. And then these doors are antique from Beijing. I love the texture of this in this hallway. I painted it a dramatic black, so this is kind of a palette cleanser to the next part, which you're going to see is the studio. In this space, I wanted this to look like an addition. So here we have a Dutch door, and this is actually where clients enter when they do come to the studio. We have projects all over the southeast, so we don't have a lot of clients that come here, but when they do, they always come to this door, and this is a greeting area here. Love this awning, this window treatment here. I wanted it to have a pool cabana type of a vibe. Of course, the classic Brazilians by Dorothy Draper on this day bed, performance fabric. And then you have the whimsy of these wall sconces in the same aqua blue. Love the geometric of the floor, the mosaic floor. And then we transition into the studio. I actually have it set up because we're having a lunch in here tomorrow. So this is how it functions as a dining room. But after the party tomorrow, we will actually clear this table. And this works as our studio. You'll see the desk here. We have all of our samples in here. So this is a working studio. But what's really great, let me show you this. This cabinet actually closes fully. And it's no longer an office. So everybody think about too, the occurrence of home offices is so large now. So you can, this is a multi-purpose room, which makes it great. So remember that for yourselves at home with a home office. Well, again, love to entertain, not shy with color. I always start my entertaining with place cards or some type of a theme. So actually we created this entire tablescape on these place cards by Mr. Pease, which I adore them, um, with the birds and the color palette. So that's how this started. Also, we've had Thanksgiving in here, beautiful days. We will open these doors. This makes a wonderful transition to the outside. And then we have another little patio area out here, which makes it really nice. The floors are painted white. And that's another thing too. I also like to test things out here for myself instead of for a client. I had white floors like this in our bedroom. We'll show you that a little bit later. 
and they were white, and because they did not get any UV sun, they actually turned yellow. So I'm glad I learned that lesson on myself and not a client. So we had to repaint those floors another color. But because this room gets so much light, the white worked. And what's really nice with all of this, I did the uh, wall treatment in white, the lighting is white, so then the fabrics for our clients, their samples, flooring, they all pop and we're not influenced by other colors in the room. So that's why this room is also so white. It's because of that. So the approach to this tablescape began with these place cards. Always I like to take one theme and then just run with it from there. So this created the color palette here. You can see, for instance, I've got the natural bird and the pops of um, vibrant colors. So then we have cut grapefruits. Remember, it doesn't always have to be traditional flowers. We have flowers inside of this pagoda. But then again, remember that you have elements of fresh fruit that you can intermingle. It just, it doesn't always have to be flowers. Think out of the box. I love the element of the wood and the rattan against the contrast of the natural and the, I love this deer moss, bright green deer moss. I use that a lot. But then remember too for conversation that you need to be able to look across the table. So I like the height of these umbrellas, but yet you can see through and speak and have conversation. Love the texture too of the rattan, these napkin rings. These are by Caspari, the hot pink, the tortoise flatware, and again, so another pop too. These are very inexpensive. You can interject a color of any type on your tablescape, pick up some color glasses, and that adds a nice little pop. And then the texture again of the chargers underneath, the natural mixed, and these are actually paper. I believe they're Caspari too, possibly. So um, yeah. Just play with color. Don't be so stiff. Be playful. So my husband, we went on a, a couple's trip recently, and the best advice that one of our couple friends had is she, um, her husband always provided her a dresser, which I think is a great idea. So if you're hosting, 30 minutes before the party, you always have a dresser, so you have a cocktail while you're dressing for your party. And it does put you at ease, believe it or not. So um, yeah, it's called a dresser. I didn't know about that till this past spring. So I do like that for hosting. And also whatever you can do ahead of time, get all of that done first and then do the final little touches later. So make it enjoyable. You, you have to enjoy yourself and have fun. So another element that I love too in this room is the classic details, but then you have fresh uh, photography. For instance, this is a Slim Aaron, so we have one here and one here. So I love that look. This is actually Holly's desk. And during um, a dinner party for tomorrow for that lunch, then we will take the computer out and then we'll have desserts or salad buffet style on this table as well. So I love the freshness of the photography in here. So let's take a look at the primary bedroom. So here we actually have a pocket door, again, a little bit of that age and patina to make this home feel a little bit older. Entryway here, I love the detail of the mirror with the rosettes. I've used that a lot here in the home too. And then this is our bedroom. It was all gray before. I would not suggest this to others, but I've got really tired of the gray, so we actually paint in color on top of the scenic paper. So um, I've added elements of coral, some raspberry, and a real pretty soothing green. And then I'm, I do these a lot too, these fabric console tables below TVs and in entry halls, because these are great for storage and it gives a nice softness to the room. And then it has the dressmaker detail of the trim on the bottom of that little coral color. And then take a look at the rug. So I designed this pattern, adore it. Of course, it's Chippendale again. And then we even have monograms in the corner. I adore monograms. They're just my absolute favorite. And then, of course, speaking of monograms, this is my favorite uh, bedding. It's from Leontine Linens. I've used them for probably 25 years. I adore them. These are all hand embroidered. Very, very easy to launder. And they just, they're so, so elegant and I just adore them. They're nice and crisp. And in this room, we also added these brown chest. Again, it's a mix of the old and the new. So you have the freshness of a white bed, but then an older brown piece as the nightstands. And then it has the mirror detail again with the rosettes. And it's just a wonderful, very refreshing, easy room to be in. It's, it's, I'd say probably the studio in this room is my favorite in the entire house. All right, so in this room too, you have um, lots of patterns going on. You have the scenic paper. So again, that's your floral. 
Next you have the geometric of your rug. And then, not to make it too busy, I did another smaller scale geometric on the chair, which was actually my great-grandmother's chair in Ottoman. And then the drapery is the same material, that same geometric. So again, remember, geometric, floral, and just have the geometrics be a different scale. And then we added in a little bit of animal print with the Brunswick & Fee Classic Latouche fabric. So this is also a very wonderful example of how you can mix all of these patterns and colors, but it's still soothing. It's not too much or overwhelming, for sure. And then what I think also helps that too is the white bedding, again, to keep the room clean. And then you have just the two accent colors of this beautiful orange, kind of a melon color, and this um, spring green. So one thing that was actually funny with the monograms on our old bedding um, next door, it was, you know, classic. You're supposed to do the, you know, the wife's monogram, and he didn't like that. He said, well, where's my name? So we actually put in, it's David and Edith Ann Duncan. And of course, you keep the D with the D because it's David Duncan, because you never separate the husband's first name from the last name. So um, really, that's, that's really it. He doesn't have that much of an opinion. He trusts me completely when it comes to decor for the entire home. So um, he's very forgiving, he's a good sport as far as letting me create and, and do my thing. I don't interject with his business and he doesn't really with mine either. It's hard when, um, with clients when spouses have different taste. So we always try to mix that too because lots of times um, there's more input than you think and they actually notice elements that you wouldn't think that they would notice. So you know, you do want to have you know, a conversation with your clients as far as what both members or both partners would want in their space and make it happy for both of them. But just, David's very easy. I'm lucky in that respect. When working with clients, you get to know them very intimately because we ask very unusual questions. You know, what is your routine in the morning? Do you both stay in the same bedroom? Do you both use the bathroom at the same time? What is, what is your usual schedule? And that determines a lot of where we place items their use and their function. Because another thing is I'm very attuned to function. That's always first for me, believe it or not. You see all this color and decoration, you think, oh, it's just decoration. It's not. There's always a function or purpose for something, and then I will make it pretty. This bedroom, it's our house is a lab. I would not suggest this for other people to paint on top of their paper, but I took a chance and it, and it worked. So now would I possibly maybe use that for another client that has an investment of scenic paper and they want to add some color, then yes, we possibly could, but I'd, I wouldn't suggest it. So I always try things out uh, here at home first before I try that on someone else. My favorite thing I think is always the compliment of how long has this been here because there's a sense of age to it and also very warm and welcoming. I think it's inviting, it's comfortable, and that's, that's what we really want everyone to feel like when they visit our home. So what's really fun is next the dressing room. This to me is, um, it's very organized, it's by color, but also it has surprise elements of the wallpaper on the ceiling. Again, it's the Latouche, so it's an animal print. Have that there. The walls are painted a really pretty saturated emerald green. And then the rug. So I actually uh, select rugs. I, have, I select all of the threads. I have these custom made and it even has again the monogram in the corner. So again, you know, I, I love a monogram. So this is a wonderful space to get dressed um, every day and feel my best. So one of my favorite shoes actually are Stubbs and Wooten. Of course it has a blue and white Canton jar on the front. I love those. They're just my absolute favorite. I love the character of them. See, again, Canton jars. These are the most comfortable shoes ever, and they're classic. So you can tell once I love something, I really love it. Just classic, but again, a little pop of a surprise, right? We all like that. Um, and in here too, the Lucite chandelier, love that. And then these Chippendale cases that I have here house all of my handbags, which is fun, because I feel like I'm shopping, but I'm not shopping, right? So they're all corralled together, as far as clutches, straw bags. You know, have fun when you get dressed. And again, I always look at my clients' wardrobes and how they dress. You know, are they tailored? Are they very whimsical, carefree, casual, more formal? So we always interview our clients and take note of favorite items in their closet, because again, what you 
feel your best wearing is what your home should be too. So that's a great indicator. So in this space, we have brown, uh, gray floors that look like they are wood. But then I also love the juxtaposition of mirrored cabinet fronts. And then this is actually stone with mirror inset inside. And the shape of this stone piece is actually the same as the wallpaper pattern. So take note of the wallpaper. Again, I love the metallic element to it, the geometric. And then the, remember the contrast that I spoke about with the geometrics is I love florals mixed with them. So that this is a wonderful fully upholstered bench in a classic scalamandre chinoiserie pattern. And then one of my favorite elements is this bench here at the end. Whenever my daughter was growing up, she would always sit there while I was getting ready to put makeup on. And when she comes home to visit from college, she always comes in here too in the mornings. And we'll hang out here. So this is a great space. Love the shape of this window, the rectangular. Our architect, Sarah Lee, came up with the concept for this. So I love the dressmaker detail of the headboard type uh, bench at the end underneath that really pretty window. And then of course the classic uh, Schumacher window treatment fabric here with the tape. So yeah, just a little pop of green is a nice mix to bring in the green from the bedroom. So this is one of my favorite great sunlight. So you'll take notice that in this room we love the sconces and the reason why I like that is because it gives a nice glow to your complexion when you're getting ready to. So I like the glow of the sconces everywhere and then it's a nice element too when we're using the bathtub to have the glow of this light fixture on. And then you'll also notice that these walls are hand painted, which gives a nice organic feel to the room as well. But yes, the lighting is very important. In every single room, it's your jewelry. Okay, so this is the same guy we have in the front foyer, and I love him. So you should have touches of whimsy in every room. And so this is one of those quirky, whimsical items that I love. And of course, he has a coral necklace, right? Because that's the pop of color that we have in here. But why not? He can hold your towels. Sometimes I put soap in here or little sponges, so I change him a lot too according to, you know, just change of season and that kind of thing. So remember, this is another great example too, to have containers like this. For instance, this holds our Epsom salts. So make, you know, items very pretty when you, you know, take the salts to the bathtub. Think about the container that the salts could be in that would be attractive and unusual and incorporate those items. So I always do that. Or, you know, for instance, on my husband's vanity, a vintage cup holds Q-tips. So use I or a decanter. So use different containers. That gives a lot of uh, age and patina and character to the space. Okay, so next let's go upstairs and I'll show you some bedrooms. Okay, so here we are on the second floor. This is actually what we call the pajama lounge. So our kids come up here especially all during high school, and then when they come home to visit from college, they gather here, conversation, gaming, of course. But I love this wallpaper. It's Kate Spade. Love the colors. And then the rug is unusual, too. I selected all of these threads and created this pattern. And then, of course, we have another rug here. So this space, I tried to make it very warm and, and welcoming for them. And it's great from downstairs, too, to hear their conversations of what they're having with their friends too. So it's fun. Play games up here. Georgia Catherine played the harp. I wish she'd play a little bit more. She used to play a lot in high school. So, so let's take a look at her bedroom. So this room started with the classic Latouche fabric. I love this. And then the photography. So Georgia Catherine picked images that she just really, really liked. And of course it's fashion. She's into that. So I love the um, cleanliness of this. This is where she learned to surf when we went to Hawaii. So uh, different ones have different meaning. And then the wallpaper gives a nice warmth and texture, a different layer for this room. And I love the geometric pattern too. Oversized modern lamps. And again, remember, because it's not all traditional, there's some, but mix in some modern elements. And then these shades are in a contrasting fabric. I had someone here local make these tables in the bed. And of course that's clad in all the same pattern. Laura Park coverlet, I love the graphic color of this. And the concept for this room is also a pool cabana. 
So I wanted that area over there to feel like you're inside of a pool cabana. So that's why we have that great cornice. What I think makes a home come alive is the mix of old and new. So you have inherited pieces, you have your, you know, grandmother's silver, or you have that special chair from your father. But then you also mix in elements of lucite or more uh, fresh books. So you have a mix of the old and the new. So it gives a wonderful patina to the space. You're still keeping it fresh, but also using those inherited pieces or pieces that you buy, buy in a vintage store, a mix of the old and the new. I think that's what gives it soul. So this is actually a Jack and Jill bathroom. So Georgia Cabin has her sink and her water closet in here. Great Lily Pulitzer wallpaper. And then a classic black and white tile floor. But then this space is where the shower and tub is located. Again, wonderful scratchy element of the gold grass cloth. Classic bird and thistle window treatment. Brass. I, I love the, this is actually my favorite finish, is the um, brush brass. That or polished nickel, I think is classic in bathrooms and kitchens. Okay, so next we have our son's room. Of course, this is very masculine. Paul had a lot of in, uh, opinions about how he wanted this room to be. So uh, we took it and ran with it. So the first thing we started with was the wallpaper on the ceiling. This is the classic Schumacher print. Looks like mountains, but it was very graphic. Paul wanted black and white with a touch of blue. And then we have the scale of the very tall bed. Of course, more of those Leontine lens. Love a classic monogram. Touches of some ecats here. And then the texture of this grass cloth clad nightstands. Love that. Articulating lights. They could use to read and then reposition them. And then I placed mirrors on the left and the right to give the um, mood or feeling that there were windows there and open up this room a little bit more. And it gives a nice reflection. And then a classic, you know, um, wool rug here on the floor. But yeah, this is all Paul. He picked everything. And I, I love it. It's, it's a little bit different than the rest of the house, but it's also Paul's room. So uh, it's great. It's fun. Love this piece, the photography, and then of course this piece by Natural Curiosities, Paris. He went there with uh, school one time and he loved that. So just keep it in mind too, children, they have their own personality and let them, let them have their say in it too. This bonsai tree, Paul, it's preserved, but then uh, I'm babysitting one in the kitchen for him as well. That's a real bonsai tree and it's been fun to actually take care of it. What does home mean to me? A special place, a cocoon of family and friends where everyone's just making memories for the holidays, or maybe it could just be an off weekend, weekend night, nothing planned, just impromptu. So making memories with family and friends. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.